Never before have you or I been more like Mary and Joseph. I mean, who needs a plum part in a nativity play? We don't need any costumes. We don't need any dress-ups. What with the disruption, with chaotic decrees directing our travel plans, with the economy, more seriously, with the threat of death hanging over loved ones. Christmas feels out of our control. And can you and I, can we be confident that this Christmas will be considerably better than the last one? In this bleak midwinter of our lives, and in an increasingly weary world, you've come here tonight for a booster. Not a a vaccine booster, but a Christmas booster. And I'm glad that you have. I'm glad that those of you joining online, you've come for your Christmas booster too. Our hearts, our hearts, they are busy as Bethlehem. Christmas is complex. It's complex at the best of times. So how can we simplify Christmas tonight? The first thing I'd like to say to us tonight is that Jesus, he is order in the chaos. Jesus is order in the chaos. We've just heard St. John writing, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. Christmas is not putting your hope in the way the wind blows or in blind chance, but the order, what John calls the the logos, behind it all. Did Jesus say, I am the Omicron? No, he didn't. He said, I am the omega. I am the end of it all. He also said, I am the alpha. I am the beginning. Christmas ends and Christmas begins with Jesus Christ. As if you want your Christmas this year to be better than Christmas last year, then Jesus is a very good place to start. And he is also the goal of Christmas. He is the end point. He is the end point of all of our lives. C.S. Lewis said this, the birth of Christ is the central event in the history of earth. The very thing the whole story has been about. And in an increasingly shaky world, it seems that the center of gravity for our universe is in a stable in Bethlehem. Because John tells us that the word, the the order, the logos behind it all, that that the word became flesh, made his dwelling among us. And in our previous reading, St. Matthew, he writes that all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet Isaiah, that the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. The wonder of Christmas is that the author of it all, the the source, the origin of life itself, that he would enter the story for you and for me, to be very, very close to you and me. That all the order, all the love in the universe would choose to manifest himself Not firstly as a man, but as a baby, totally vulnerable, totally weak, who knows all our weaknesses firsthand. You may be here thinking tonight, yeah, Jamie, but what use is a baby? Isn't a baby the very definition of chaos? As a new parent, uh, last week I was changing our three-month-old's nappy, And uh, I'd taken the nappy off. I hadn't quite managed to put the next nappy on in time. There was poo all over the wall. And at the moment, at that moment, I said, this is the very definition of chaos. But the baby that we read about in the Gospels, 
the baby that we read about shows us that, that Jesus, he is savior in the chaos. And Jesus is savior in the chaos. Matthew tells us that Joseph, he is contemplating divorce. But after he'd considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. The angel seemed to have to say this with recurring frequency around the accounts of Christmas. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Joseph thinks he has a problem. He thinks he has a problem that his fiance is pregnant and he's not the father. And you and I, we may think that our circumstances are chaotic. But the angel points to a much, much deeper circumstance, a much, much deeper chaos, a chaos that resides within us. Because the angel says that Jesus will save his people from their sins. Beneath the ephemera, beneath the festivities, beneath the the chaos that is swirling around us. It's what's within us. What the Bible describes as sin, those, those things that cut us off from God, that untether us from the source of order in the world. That is the chaos that you and I need to deal with. Christmas, we, at Christmas we see that Jesus' very identity, his name, would mean the one who saves their people from their sins. So this Christmas, Christmas doesn't need saving. You and I need saving. We need saving from our sins. And, and what we see is that Jesus, he is order in the chaos, not just because He is God with us in the chaos, but he is our savior from the chaos. The greatest danger this year for you and me is not that we would be like Mary and Joseph, that our lives may feel turned upside down and inside out. The greatest danger is that we take on the part of the innkeeper and we say there's no room at the inn relegating Jesus somewhere to the back of our lives. Because Jesus, although Jesus' birth is the the central event in human history, we can miss it. We can miss it. Obscure and in the shadows, and to not treat it as the main event. It has never, never been more important for you and for me to treat the central event in human history as the central event in each one of our hearts. Our hearts as busy as Bethlehem. Will we make room for Jesus Christ this Christmas? So much preparation. Preparing presents, preparing meals, preparing for family, but will we prepare Jesus Christ's room in our hearts? Will you and I adore him? Will we love him? Will we love him, adore him above all else, above everything else? When you think about it, at the, at the moment, people are, are not actually waiting for uh, decrees from the government, are they, this Christmas time? No, you and I, we're we're taking Christmas into our own hands. We're taking control of our Christmases. The the 19th century uh, English pre-Raphaelite artist, Holman Hunt, he painted this, uh, this painting of Jesus, which he called the light of the world, just like John describes him in our, in our reading tonight. And note that in this painting, you can't actually see the handle. On that door, there's no handle on that door, is there? Because the handle is not on the outside of the door. The handle is on the inside of the door. You and I, 
We do have control. Amidst all the chaos in our lives and the illusion of control, we do have control of one thing. We ultimately have control over whether we will open the door to Jesus Christ and to allow Jesus to step into our Christmas.